All Electric Mini is just about to get unveiled on July 9th, and this is essentially a first BMW, all electric BMW in five years. So there's a lot of anticipation. We don't know that much information about it just yet, but a perfect guest today, because it's Friday, and Tom Malagny of Inside EVs is going to be here. And what a better guest <laughs> uh, and a speaker to have today, because he was one of the original beta testers for the Mini 10 years ago. Um, so he's going to be here in just a second. We're going to discuss this because it's a big deal. It is actually a big deal. Not too many things are... So we're going to speculate. Basically, we're going to speculate a little bit. But um, there's still enough information for us to, to give you guys a good preview. So uh, we're going to do that coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And if you have already done that, that's great. But also don't forget the bell notification icon. That way you won't miss anything moving forward. Just like I said, it's Friday. So Tom Malagny uh, is going to be here. And we call this a Friday segment plugged in with Tom Malagny. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure right now on BMW because they're kind of behind. They're behind of, uh, you know, Audi, obviously Tesla, uh, even Mercedes. So this is uh, this is going to showcase um, what they can do. I, granted, they're going to be one version behind on their own uh, platform uh, because the next one, and I X3, is actually going to uh, come out on their fifth generation platform. But nevertheless, this is um, uh, this is something that a lot of people are looking forward to. And I'm, you know, I'm interested to know what you guys think, especially if you're potentially a reservation holder. Uh, for this car. All right, before I bring in Tom, just want to uh, give you a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out all electric and Byte coming at the end of the next year to uh, the US and Europe, starting at only $45,000. Go ahead and uh, click uh, on the link in the description of this video. That's where you can reserve yours. And the best part, that it takes zero dollars to reserve a Byton, uh, and it's about 60 seconds really of your time. So if you haven't done so, go and reserve your Byton today. All right, without further ado, I'm going to bring the Tom in and he'll tell us all about it. Tom, how are you? Good afternoon, Alex. Doing all right. All right. So tell us a little bit about your connection, <laughs> your your emotional connection to to this uh, mini. Because um, did I get it right? You you've been a, you were a re original beta tester like ten years ago for uh, the original mini. Exactly. And but first, what I would like to do is raise a beer to your followers here. Sam Adams Summer Ale. Today's the first day of summer, and uh, I'd like to uh, wish everybody a happy and electric summer. So I hope you don't mind. I'm uh, partaking a little bit this afternoon and relaxing outside before our uh, our uh, weekly meet here. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I have a, uh, some roots with this. And uh, the, actually, for your followers that don't know, back in 2009, BMW had a pilot program um, it was, and they made 450 all-electric Mini Coopers, and they called it the Mini E. They leased them here in the U.S. Uh, to California, and about half of them in California, and about half of them here on the East Coast in New York and New Jersey. And it was really the car that got me into electric cars. I kind of applied to be in this program on a whim, and six months later, I got an email from BMW saying I was one of the people selected and do I want to participate in this pilot test program to help shape the future? So um, it was an expensive program to be part of. Usually when you're beta testing, you get like the better end of the deal. We had to pay $850 a month wow. to, to lease an, wow. an electric Mini Cooper. Why and did you agree? Time, you could lease a regular Mini Cooper for like two ninety nine <laughs> a month, so it was about as expensive as leasing three Mini Coopers or but one I Mercedes really, S Class. But so why did you agree? Well, I you know I really wanted um, to. I've always been tech minded. I've always wanted to be the first to have something, you know. And uh, I'm sure a lot of your followers are like that. A lot of electric car owners fall into that category. You know, not everybody that drives an electric car does it purely for environmental reasons. A lot of people like the fact that they have this advanced technology 
A lot of other people like the fact that uh, it's energy independence and domestic energy, not relying on foreign oil. So there's a lot of reasons why people go for electric cars. And one of the main reasons I went for the Mini E back then was I just thought it would be a really cool thing to drive. You know, you want to drive an electric car for a year, nonetheless, a Mini Cooper, which is a cool little fun car to drive. So um, I applied for the program and uh, kind of the rest is history. That's what really got me started on this whole uh, electric vehicle kick. And it's actually been exactly 10 years. Uh, I think it was June 13th of 2009 when I picked up my uh, Mini Cooper, my Mi Mini E. And at the time I was driving a Porsche Boxster S and three months later I sold the Boxster. I no longer wanted to drive it. And uh, the rest is history. I've been driving electric for the last 10 years. Well, so tell me why this is a big deal for a lot of people that they're finally doing it again. <laughs> and do you think they're going to do this the right way this time around? Because we don't really know the specs yet, right? Yeah. Well, I think the right way is a loaded statement. Uh, the right way for whom? So uh, one of the things that I think is becoming clear now is that it's not going to have 200 miles of range. And I think that's going to be a non-starter for a lot of your followers and a lot of people, quite frankly. Uh, a couple years ago, I was at uh, one of the auto shows. Not sure if it was Geneva or Frankfurt, um, maybe even one of the ones here in the U.S. I think it was a foreign show. And I was talking to one of the BMW reps that I know. I've, no I've known that's one of the reasons why I know so many people that are in the B BMW's electric vehicle program because I date back 10 years ago to this mini E program where I had a lot of exposure to these people. And uh, you know, the, the mini, this new mini Cooper electric was still a couple years out. And I said to him, uh, it better have 200 miles of range if you're launching in 2020. And he kind of looked at me and said, Tom, you're going to be disappointed. So that lets me know that, um, you know, we're talking about uh, probably a lot less than 200 miles because if it was close, I don't think he would have made a statement like that. And all the rumors we're hearing now, um, the official specs aren't out, but it sounds like the people close to BMW are saying it's going to have um, the, a 33 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, that's the battery pack that's in my 2018 i3. The new i3 in 2019 has a 42 kilowatt hour battery pack. But the Mini is smaller than the i3, so I can understand if they can't squeeze exactly as large a battery into it as they can in the i3. Um, I think they could if they got creative. Uh, I think, you know, like some electric vehicles, like the Leaf, for instance, does the uh, second half of the battery pack, it's elevated, and they double stack the cells under the rear passenger seat. So I think if BMW did something like that, that they could get 40 or 45 kilowatt hours in, in this little car, and that would have given it uh, to probably a 200-mile range. But in any event, it looks like it's going to launch with um, around 33 kilowatt hours, probably 140, 150 mile at the most EPA range rating. And I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed with that. Uh, I think that this is a car that's going to do a lot better in Europe than it might in the U.S., do you know what the price is going to be? Because, I mean, obviously anything under 200 miles is not really being serious, but I can see it being bought by people maybe having a city car or maybe a car for you know, their, their teenage kid um, and, you know, where 120 miles is enough, but then the price has to be ridiculously low. Have you heard anything about the price? Well, nothing that BMW makes is ridiculously low, Alex. So even though it's in the mini brand, uh, you know, I would expect... You know, the i3 base price is close to 43000 So we know it can't approach that. Uh, and the i3 is kind of handicapped by the fact that it's got this really expensive architecture with carbon fiber frame and all aluminum, uh, you know, parts. So, it, it you know, I, I think that's what really pushed the i3 price up to where it is now. So, you know, my guess is it's going to probably be in the mid-30s which still isn't going to be terribly competitive when you realize that there's, you know, there's cars like the Bolt and the Nero and the Kona that are only a few thousand dollars from that. 
if it comes in at that price, which, you know, I kind of expect it to, uh, but BMW and many are going to say, well, those cars don't have the driving dynamics that Mini does. Mini Coopers were always a little bit more expensive than other cars in that class. And, you know, it's got that iconic name and, uh, you know, they're fun cars. To drive. I have to tell you, Alex, my Mini E that I had back then, I absolutely loved it. It was a blast to drive. And I would definitely be considering a Mini, the, the new Mini, which, by the way, they're not calling it the Mini E like they did the prototype car. It's the Mini SE. So it's like the there's the Mini Cooper S, which is the gasoline-powered one. And this is the Mini Cooper SE for electric. So that's the, the naming designation. But I tell you, these cars are a blast to drive. You know, they talk about go-kart handling. They're super low to the ground, so tossable. But the handling with the battery pack down underneath the car like that on such a small, little, low car, it's going to be really great. The, the handling on my Mini E was great. And that didn't have the, the skateboard design battery. It had a giant battery was put where the back seats were. The back seats were removed. And there was this big battery block that sat right behind the driver and passenger seat. But it still handled great. I tell you, for a car that they kind of put together with all off-the-shelf shelf parts, that was a really great car. Everybody in the Mini E program that I know loved it and we didn't want to let it go we were begging bmw to let us keep them at the end of the program well it's okay so let me play a little bit of devil's advocate or maybe just regular advocate here because let's say i'm a regular person right and i'm not some tree hogger like myself or you whatever i don't know if you could categorize yourself as, as such but let's say people just want to get a mini cooper right and they have a choice between gas and this electric one right the gas i'm assuming it's going to be cheaper than the electric one or at least maybe the same price correct me if i'm wrong and secondly my range is going to be triple of that um why in the world would i buy an electric mini cooper then well you know what wh why did people plunk down their money on the first generation nissan leaf you know that went whatever 70 tree hoggers miles no, or whatever 73 hoggers. miles you know, when they could have bought uh, gas cars for a lot less. There There's was a, a lot statement. of people that just prefer electric cars. And, you know, don't forget, we're, we're starting to get spoiled with the ranges now. You know, <laughs> you know, seven or eight years ago, people would have died for a car that went 130 or 150 miles like this can. So, you know, if, if people, there were plenty of people that lived just fine with 80 to 100 mile EVs. Now you're telling them you can have this car that maybe goes 150 miles. And, and for, for a lot of people, that's going to be just fine, Alex. And don't forget now, it's going to support DC fast charge. I believe it's going to launch with 100 kilowatt um, DC fast charge to be able to accept. I don't have that confirmed, but that's kind of what we're hearing. The infrastructure is coming. And, and, and in many places, we already have these high-speed DC fast chargers. So it's actually... You know, now that the infrastructure is coming, the longer ranges are up still better, but they're not as necessary. You'll still be able to take road trips on a car that only goes 150 miles per charge. And you really couldn't 10 years ago or eight years ago. So uh, there's going to be a market for this car. But again, I think that market's going to be a lot bigger in Europe. And uh, I think that's why they're only accepting reservations now in Europe. I think in five countries, Germany, yeah. France... Uh, Norway. Norway, Netherlands, and Sweden, I think, right? Um, that yeah. though, That's where they're accepting reservations. They're, they're not accepting reservations in the U.S. So I think, you know, BMW Group understands that this is going to primarily be a car that's sold in Europe. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little disappointed. I mean, we didn't, we didn't, we don't prepare the shows, right? We don't talk about it ahead of time. And uh, actually, I was going to do a story on this, and I was like, actually, let me, let, let me, let have, let, let, let have Tom tell me and uh, and just kind of react right in my mind. And right now, I'm, I'm actually really thought it would have been over 200 miles, and it's, it's disappointing that not. And um, it's also sets once again a, a bad uh, sort of a presence for presidents for. For BMW, generally, how serious they are about um, 
about the, uh, the, the their their electrification. Like, so let me throw that uh, question at you. What do you think this means, you know, in general terms for BMW? Do you think they're once again this shows that they're very much behind on this technology? Well, yeah, they kind of are. Uh, BMW really seemed to jump out ahead of a lot of people back in 2007, 2008, when they started the whole Project I and got this Mini Cooper on the road to test and kind of find out what works, what doesn't work out. And uh, after launching the i3, they, they've just launched a whole massive amount of plug-in hybrids. This is actually BMW's first all-electric car of the BMW groups, first all-electric car since late 2013 when they launched the i3. And, you know, it's it, it doesn't have what I think many people are going to find to be a competitive range in today's marketplace. Uh, people still want long distance uh, cars. You know, look, I just got a Model 3. I've been in BMW brand electric vehicles since 2009. I had the Mini Cooper, the Mini E. I had the uh, the Active E, the one series all electric BMW. Then I had the i3 with the range extender. Most recently, now I have the i3 S, the sport version. So I've been in BMW electric vehicles for 10 years, and I went out and got a Model 3 now. And it was basically because, you know, there, there's times when I wanted to go further, and, uh, you know, the Model 3 seemed to offer the things that I wanted to. If, if BMW had a competent, you know, family sedan, a five passenger sedan that went 200 plus miles. I don't need the 310 miles that the Model 3 has. 225, 230 would be w w would be fine for me. Um, but you still want to see that range number begin with a two. At least me personally, I, I don't pretend to to be the perfect person to judge by. You have different standards. Everybody has different standards, and that's why I think some people are going to be just fine with 140, 150 miles in this Mini Cooper, uh, but it does limit the uh, range of people that are going to want it. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, in general scheme of things is, you know, BMW does need to start producing cars with a two and maybe at some point three in front of its range, you know, for the for the EPA rating. And the fact that it's still at, you know, 120, 150, um, and, you know, when, when these cars drive in, you know, in Norway, for example, where it's going to be available, it, it, it fall, from 150 it can easily fall to 100, 110, which is still in, enough for a lot of people. But, um, man, this is a tough sell. All right. Well, listen, we're going to I'm going to obviously cover the July 9th announcement. We'll see if uh, all of these rumors uh, and are, are correct. Maybe they'll surprise us, though. I don't think either one of us are holding their breath, uh, our breath. So, um, yeah, thank you for updating us. And um, I'm going to look for some comments uh, in, the, in the comment section of this video and see if this is a car that people would uh, really actually want to buy if it was available here. Yeah, so, and one last thing I want to mention, if you could look over my right shoulder here, I'm, I got a point to where you can see it. There's um, a mini E sticker up on the wall in my garage. I've had that there since I was in the program. Um, there's a little bit of a, a, of a, a the light shining on it, so you might not be able to see it 100%. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm tried and true with the mini electric. And, uh, you know, if it, if it, if it had a, a 40, 45, 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, Alex, I think I might have gotten that instead of the Model 3. But uh, I knew that it wasn't going to deliver the range that I kind of wanted. And, uh, you know, I don't mind having one shorter range EV like the i3 and then one long range. But I didn't want to have two cars that, you know, neither one went more than 150 miles. So let's see how this unfolds. I think it's going to sell okay. It's not going to be this crazy car that they sell 10000 a month, but I think it's going to do okay in Europe. Mini is a, it's an iconic brand. People love Mini Coopers, and uh, the electric powertrain, in my opinion, just makes it that much better. So, you know, I, I think they're going to sell pretty well in Europe. The U.S. is going to be interesting, uh, depending on how they price this. If it's below 35000 I think it, it, it has a chance of doing okay. But if it's the same price as a Bolt or a Nero or a, you know, Kona, then, uh, you know, I think we're talking, you know, hundreds a month, not, not approaching even a thousand a month. 
I totally agree. All right, well, thanks for the insight. I, I will still need to get a full uh, show of your impression of the Model 3, so maybe next time. But um, once uh, once the July 9th comes around, I'll definitely produce another video, uh, and we'll uh, we'll talk about all the uh, all the specs that are finally going to be revealed. So thanks so much, and I will see you next week. Very good, Alex. Take care. All right, guys. Well, I got to tell you, I, I, I was just kind of finding out a lot of this stuff uh, uh, myself uh, as, as, as Tom was uh, uh, talking about it. And OK, he's right. He's definitely right that there will be uh, there will be an audience uh, for this car because of a name, because of there are a lot of fans already of this car, just like with uh, the um, Kia Soul EV. Right. Um, though, of course, it has a longer range and a lot of people, especially in Europe, who don't need a 200, 300 mile range may just opt out for this because after all it i mean everybody who drives a mini cooper that i know they absolutely love the car it's a fun car to drive so you know just like tom said he was sold from the very beginning um and i i can see that happening now if you are either owner right now or hoping to get one in the future let me know what is your number one appeal and do you think you can get over the actual you know a lack of range on this one um also don't forget to get on our vip list uh, we're just about to send out a bonus story which is going to be pretty cool i think um every saturday we do that it's free so go to e4electric.com slash vip and uh, special thanks to one of my newer patreons nicholas curtis thank you for joining my patreon community the only place where you can watch me live and uh, thank you for uh, keeping this channel independent with your contributions all right, looking forward to your comments in the comment section. Other than that, see you next time. And remember to stay charged.